Hello, welcome to the encouraging word of today. Today is Monday, September the 13th, and we get to pick up here in the wonderful encouraging word of God in the book of 1 Peter, and we're going to begin in verse uh, chapter 5 and verse 1, and as we do so this morning, oh, how I pray that you are able to gather together uh, yesterday as the Lord's Day, Sunday, the day our Lord and Savior rose from the grave, the first day of the week, and was able to be encouraged and inspired and challenged uh, by the Word of God. And I pray that you went and sat down at the table of the Lord and fed yourself from the Word of God and were fed by the Word of God uh, of those who have oversight over your life in that regard, those who get to preach the Word Sunday, week after week over your life. And so as we pick up in chapter 5 and verse 1, he's going to speak directly to those elders, those pastors, shepherds, uh, bishops, overseers, the word is interchangeable all throughout scripture. It's the same word, presbyteros, uh, presbyteros, and so it means uh, one who has oversight and uh, care for the flock of, fa of the faith. And so uh, the Lord comes along and, and through Peter writes these words in chapter 5, verse 1. The elders or the pastors which are amongst you, I exhort, whom also am an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He says, I've come to know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And not only have I come to know him as my personal Lord and Savior, not only have I experienced the gift of the Holy Spirit, but now he has made me an elder, an overseer, overseer a shepherd, a pastor uh, of, of people's lives. And so it's a great joy to be able to do so. But he comes along and says in verse two, feed the flock of God, which is amongst you. Feed the flock of God. And so you have the elders and then you have the flock of God. And so an elder is to take care and feed the flock, and, and the flock gets to feast on the Word of God. And so that is the prayer that yesterday, as you went and gathered with a body of believers, that you were fed from the Word of God, fed uh, uh, the Word that encourages and challenges our heart, because it's just like with us in regular life, in physical life. If we only eat what we really like like desserts and 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 sweet things like me i love bread and corn and rice and potatoes and all those good i mean they're great things and they're good but if i eat them in overabundance they're not good for me if i don't get my vegetables and my greens and my peas and my beans and all the things which bring nourishment to my body all my fruits and vegetables then my body begins to decline because i'm not getting fed a well balanced diet i'm only getting just what what feels good to me I also have to do those things that don't feel that good to me, but I know they're greatly beneficial for me, and I need those things. And so Peter comes along and says, hey, feed the flock of God, O oh, shepherd, O oh, elder. Give him a well-balanced diet that they may be able to grow uh, thereby, because you're going to have to have it. And then he says, not only feed the flock of God, which is amongst you, but taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. In other words, it's not you haven't, you're not being made to do this. This is something that you desire to do. As uh, First Timothy uh, uh, would say, if any man desires the office of bishop, he desires a good thing. He's not doing it because he has to. He's doing it because he wants to. He voluntarily surrenders his life and, uh, and, and will to the Lord to lead and feed the flock of God. And so he says, he says, not only should we do it voluntarily, but he said we shouldn't be doing it for money. He says, not for filthy liqueur. That means money. That means the greedy gain. That means only doing it because this is an easy thing to do to get me money. And uh, sadly, there's a lot of men of God who are not giving the flock a well-balanced diet. They're doing it because someone, has, someone else has told them they ought to do it because they have some kind of gift or talent that, that they think that they ought to be uh, using in that regard. They're not really called by God. They're not really interested in the whole counsel of God's word. They only want to make people feel good. Well, that's exactly what the Bible says was going to happen in the end days anyway, that they were going to, that the people would heed to themselves teachers that would only tickle their ears and feed them what they want to be fed, not what they need to be fed. And here we have another one for that. But he says, not only are they going to do that, but this is going to be become about an occupation. It's going to be about how to make and earn a living rather than a calling from God to speak to the nations, to speak to the congregation. And he says, if these people only sign up and the first question out of their mouth is, well, what's the salary? What's the package? What comes along with this deal? Then you know you've got the wrong kind of pastor. You've got the wrong kind of shepherd. You've got the wrong kind of overseer. Because uh, God takes care of, the, of his shepherds. He may do that by the flock and through a salary, but he may do it by day by day. Give us this day our daily bread. And so 
He ought not to be worried about the money. But then thirdly, he gives another great uh, issue. He says, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. In other words, he's not someone who just stands behind a pulpit and preaches, go out into the world and, and serve others and pray for your enemies and love your neighbor as yourself and treat your wife with respect and honor. Uh, all these different things that the scripture calls for every Christian to be if he preaches those things, but he's not those things and he's not an example to the flock. Or if he comes along and wants to put his finger on every single area and he's in control and making sure everybody's doing what he feels is best, then that's going to be dangerous as well. He says, you're not a Lord over God's heritage. Christ is the head of the church and he should be the one leading it. And so I pray that you have a minister who feeds you a well-balanced diet. <laughs> I pray you have a minister who uh, who takes oversight willingly, voluntarily, and he doesn't do it for the money. As I, as, uh, as I saw a good a caption for this, it says, I'm not in it for the income, I'm in it for the outcome. I'm, out for, I'm in it because of what I know that God wants to do in the hearts and lives of people. Uh, how he wants to see lives change and turned around. And so the reason that we should be examples and the reason that we shouldn't be, try to be the Lord over God's heritage, that we should just lead by example, uh, serve the body. That's what Christ did. Did he not come and serve the disciples? And they were like freaked out because, you know, you shouldn't be washing my feet. We should be washing your feet. And he says, oh, no, no, no. If I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. And they're like, oh, okay, well then wash my whole body then. <laughs> okay. But that's what Christ did. He came and humbled himself and became a servant. That's what the elders ought to do. That's what they ought to be. That's how they ought to call because in verse five, I mean, verse four. And when the chief shepherd, see, they're under shepherds, but when the chief shepherd comes, they're going to give an account to him, he says. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You're going to stand before the living God of heaven one day and have to give an account of how you fed the flock of God, how you entered into the flock of God by calling, not occupation, and how you, how you uh, led uh, by an example and not lorded over the church. There's only one Lord, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so I pray today that as you go forth from this moment forward, that you make sure you pay attention to those and whom stand before you week after week and listen to what they say, but also look at how they live. And I pray that as you go forth today, you go forth mild in the name of the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged.